Come with your personal confuser. Don't whine, don't moan, don't yell. Just call for help. We'll see you later. Tonight, the trials and tribulations of Wi-Fi in Brooklyn, New York. Plus, are the great deals and spam all the cracked up to be? And press play, it's land party time. Live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco, it's the Screen Savers! Woo! Screensavers. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Kevin Rose. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we have a great show. A Comedian great audience. Great audience. They're going oh, crazy. Cool. Already. Yeah. Yeah. Great audience. Huge audience tonight. Look at that. Comedian Mike Daisy is here on the show. He's going to give us his take on installing Wi-Fi. Which... Is it always tends fun. to be bizarre. Yes. And we're tired of spam ads trying to sell you software you can download for free. So we put together a list for you of stuff they're going to try to sell you through spam that you can get for free by downloading. Yes. Cool, cool stuff, too. Yeah. We like cool stuff. DVD backup, just a little hint of what's coming up. And more. Let's check in with Dan to see what's going on today. Yo, I'm taking your phone calls. You guys know? Do phone calls on yeah. the show? You're doing LAN party, too. No, yes, I am. I, oh, I can't play today. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just an administrator. We got some. We got some cool guys playing in the just land party today. But uh, to give us a call, it's 888-989-7879. You can also email us at screensavers at techtv.com. Excellent. Good to know. And today is Thursday, and of course that means, like we just said, it's time for our land party, which is powered by Nvidia. Joshua, what are we playing today? We're playing Far Cry. What else? <laughs> today Love we're playing that. Team Deathmatch. So, everybody out there, get on a team. See if you can kill the guys here today. Today, if you get on the high scores, you will win this Far Cry CD holder. Oh, my God. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. Isn't it shiny? <laughs> exactly. Today, the Screen Savers team is jam-packed full of the Tech TV Lab Rats. These are the geek, geek minds behind nearly all of our product roundups, and each has their own specialty. And seat number one... Senior technical analyst specializing in PC technologies, audio video storage, graphics cards. Robert Big Daddy Rat Heron <laughs> is in the land party today. Rat Next TV. to him. Rat Wong. <laughs> and lastly, on the very end, without him we would have no products at all. The man in charge of our massive library of gadgets and toys, Frank, you dirty rat Chan. <laughs> so if you can beat them, be very scared of this team. When they're not benchmarking our products, they're playing video games, be very scared. I think they're unbeatable. Back to you guys. Frank Frank is like our best friend on the end there. He's the one that gives Frank? us... We're so nice to Frank because he gives us all the cool products. Video? Frank? <laughs> he can't hear you. He's got to do on. notebook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's like, what? really happy about not being able to hear his wine. <laughs> Let's start with the tech news that caught our eye today. Sarah is away on assignment, so it's just you and me, Pat. We can handle it. I'll start with the first story. Less than 24 hours after iTunes 4.5 was released, it was once again cracked. Wow. This time by a computer science student in Melbourne, Australia. The student writes, I have just deconstructed the encryption protocol designed by Apple's finest engineer. So is this the digital rights management that controlled the iTunes AAC files? Yeah, exactly. What they did is, I mean, you know they had uh, DRM, obviously, built into iTunes, and they, when they updated 4.5, they did a small revision right. to fix the hole that was they in the last version. They wanted to get rid of the version. thing, the, the, the Playfair, exactly. which they already chased from the United States to India and out of India in terms of hosting. Yeah, if you, don't, if you don't know what Playfair was, it's an application right. that you can download that will strip out the DRM of your iTunes songs so that you can trade them with friends, or play them on Linux, or things or, like or that. Or play them on non-iPod Play. Players, exactly, which is cool. But yes. uh, yeah, now they cracked it 24 hours later. <laughs> Oops. That sucks. Yeah. You know that lead engineer is just worried about his job right now. If a college student can crack your code in 24 hours, yeah. either that or they well, should hire the college student. you got to wonder student. if they like, tweaked it. Uh, yeah, but you say that, right? But it's like if you have, any, you have an existing limitations with the software and the mm -hmm. hardware, it's like, well, I've created an unbreakable algorithm, but you all have to buy new iPods. So all 2.9 billion iPod owners. Or firmware updates. We've, and yeah. Well, the question is, can they do anything in the firmware? Like yeah. WEP. Well, you know. The, you know, the wireless car, it's a great idea, but there's nothing you could do to the firmware in the car to right. make the web uncrackable. You have to buy a new card yeah. to get the new, yeah. So, 
Well, that sucks to be Apple. Or, no. <laughs> yeah, well, the, law, the lawyers are going to keep stomping on That's those true. tracking tools. Anyhow, Google has filed with the SEC to go public. The date has not yet been announced, but Google hopes to raise a whopping $2.7 billion on their initial public offering. The filing gave prospective <laughs> investors their first look at Google's finances. Google netted $105.6 million in profits on revenues of $961.8 million in 2003. Wow. Who says Internet companies can't make money? It just needs smart kids running up. Are we allowed to give them the IPO? I want in. Here's the thing. If you buy, here's the, here's the way it works, okay. right? If you buy Google stock. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. And you own it. I'm done with you're that. you're on air. You never get to talk about Google, and you never get to talk about any search engine or a competing technology. Hmm. Well, if I can make some money off Google, I might just do that. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Yeah, you know, it's going to be real interesting to see what the stock does. Yeah. It's going to be real interesting. Ah, they're making money. Sounds good to me. Well, they're making money now. Yeah. But you know what happens? They've got a long-term view. They become indebted to the shareholders. They're they start going services, to things like that. Yeah. 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 You, know, you watch these really yeah. smart companies. They start thinking about making Wall Street happy rather than their customers. Yeah. Mm. It'll be a really ugly Google in a couple of years. We will see. Yeah. Yes, we will. It's going to be interesting. It was part of what they did is they set up the IPO to retain as much internal control as possible. Mm. They're actually doing a very non-traditional IPO. Nice. Enough business. Can the government stop spam? We're going to find out. The U.S. Department of Justice filed a criminal complaint against four men arrested two outstanding warrants on two more the group was offering huge email campaigns with no real address basically sending out spam with no addresses no opt-outs fake basically spoofed IP addresses marketing a fraudulent diet patch for somewhere between 50 and 80 bucks a throw and were raking in as much as a hundred thousand dollars per month the FTC has been afforded over 490,000 of the group's emails for Ouch. investigation Quit buying spam products, folks. They send you spam because a lot of you actually buy the stuff, and it costs them nothing to advertise it. $100,000 in fake diet products from spam. That's crazy. I'm frothing. You know what I mean? It's like, it's basically, yeah. Makes you want to go into the spam business. <laughs> I, sounds 100 grand, 100,000 a month. Yeah, 100,000 a month. Yeah, but right now, though, if you're, you know, sitting in a prison cell, yeah, staring at somebody going. Well, that's my the cool thing about this really bill. safe. <laughs> <laughs> that's the cool thing about the bill, though, is that it actually takes down these guys. Well, we hope. You know, yes. can't spam requires marketers to include a valid physical address, valid opt-out options, and update opt-outs on a weekly basis, amongst other things. Yesterday's arrest was the first under the new law. Now we got a special guest for U.S. Senator from Montana, Conrad Burns, co-wrote the can't spam bill. He joins us now by phone from Washington D.C. Thank you for joining us, Senator Burns. Thank you for having me. Welcome. This is ex are you excited? This is the this is the first arrest under the bill. You know what? None of us get excited at this time of the day. We just got home. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want Google stock to go down, sell it to me. <laughs> It's my luck. I can take it down faster than anybody. You know what? Can we call to see if you buy stock? Because that'll influence a lot of people in the audience. You know, I'll tell you what. We, I think there was a little story about that, wasn't it? Like outsider you know, trading. The stock that we buy, I don't buy nothing. I don't sell nothing. I just pile it up. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's the way it is in Montana. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, I thought, you know, maybe this P.T. Barnum was right. He may well be right. He was right. Well, you know, we were joking about it before. People use spam to advertise real products and fraudulent products. It may be annoying, but they're definitely getting a return on it. They're making profits off it. Can't spam, how was it designed to control spam? Well, well, actually, you know, basically, you can't really control it. And, and I don't think you can pass the law because the, the Internet, the, the great highway out there, as you know, is just like a, going down a street in, in, in town. You know, you're going to drive by a lot of different businesses and some of them are good and some of them are bad mm -hmm. and uh but and that's kind of the way it is but what we can do we can the industry will come together now and they'll form some standards and and uh, and do some things so that le the legitimate marketers uh can really uh market and do it in a way in, a, in an ethical way just like a, a, a legitimate businessman can do it downtown mm -hmm. and uh and i think that will be done now in, in the case of this these last ones uh as you know well they got they got arrested they were using uh, surrogate computers and no return addresses and they were and they were they were cheating the public is this how you and, uh, and this is this ban bill give give the uh, gives the government and the law enforcement people 
uh, a way to go after those people. Is this uh, how you kind of the, for the type of case you expected the the, the Can Spam Act to, to work against? Is, is sure. This, uh, this is just exactly the way it was supposed to work, and and as you know, the uh, the four big uh, the four big engines in you know Microsoft and AOL and a bunch of those people are going after these these bigger guys, you know, because uh -huh. they're clogging up their pipes, and uh, and. And uh, so that it can happen from the civilian sector. You you you're empowered to do some things. The attorney general in your state can do some things, and the federal government. So we're watching this thing, and and if it doesn't work right, well, we'll try and fix it. That's the way we always do things. You know, there ain't no perfect bill. Now, do you think there's anything that we can do to stop overseas spam? Because this happens to be one of the ones that was inside the United States where we were yeah. actually able to crack and down. Apparently, That's nobody... right. And you know, but we're going to catch a lot of these people off guard. I hope this gets very high visibility in the press, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 it'll it'll stop a lot of this this uh, stuff. Now, as far as coming offshore, we are dealing now with or, or starting negotiations or dialogue with Australia. Uh, and England and in the European market to make sure that their spam laws look a lot like ours or ours looks a lot like theirs. Mm -hmm. And uh, with an international cooperation, I think, you know, we can curtail a lot of this junk that comes down our, our, uh, our email. What kind of jail time can they expect to face? Well, I don't think these guys are going to see any jail time. They're going to see some pretty heavy fines, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's the way it should be. They were really surprised that they were breaking the law. <laughs> so, you know, this guy said, well, I don't know if it's breaking the law. And it, well, that's what his lawyer said anyway. That's his lawyers will say anything. <laughs> They're selling fake diet patches. they got to be breaking the law. I don't know. <laughs> Seems like common sense yeah. to me. Ignorance is not a defense. That's true. Well, that's right. That's right. But although it keeps us cowboys out of jail, ignorance does. <laughs> Senator, we thank you so, so much for your time. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Senator from Montana, Conrad Burns, co-wrote the can spam bill that passed into law last year. We want to thank him for taking the time to talk to the screensavers. Enjoy your dinner, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you've done a good thing, Senator Burns. Yes. Our vengeful audience is happy. We're just getting started. <laughs> spam deals you can download for free coming up. And comedian Mike Daisy is here to talk about his efforts to install Wi-Fi in Brooklyn, New York. Be afraid when the screensavers continue. Welcome back to the screensavers. You might think it's easy to set up a Wi-Fi network in your home, but if you're Mike Daisy and you live in Brooklyn, New York, you might just run into some problems. He's a writer, performer, ex-Amazon employee, friend of the screensavers, and joins us now via satellite from New York City. Mike, welcome back to the show. Good to be back. Some fans here. I guess. So tell me, you, you decided to go to with Wi-Fi. You're launching into the unknown. What kind of problems did you run into? Well, you know, it's interesting because, uh, of course, I used to work at Amazon, so I used to, to live in Seattle. And in Seattle, uh, all the housing is made of cardboard. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, pretty much everything is modern cardboard <laughs> housing. A Wi-Fi signal travels like six or seven miles, right. and all the houses are made of cardboard. <laughs> in... Um, in Brooklyn, where I live, whole different proposition. You know, because our founding fathers, when they were building townhouses in Brooklyn, uh -huh. they didn't actually foresee the uses of radio waves or of wireless networking. And as a consequence, my entire house is made of brick. It's brick with iron rods driven through the bricks, uh, pretty much setting up a perfect Faraday cage through the whole building. Now, with a Faraday cage, there is no way you're going to get Wi-Fi throughout the house. Right. Right. Of course you're not going to get Wi-Fi. I mean, a sensible person would run Ethernet through right. different rooms, right? That's but what... <laughs> I'm not sensible. I, I, was so, I was so angry that people in Seattle had... Because I saw it as sort of an East Coast, West Coast thing. Right. I got very Rivalry. angry yes. about the idea that I had a better standard of living when I was in Seattle. And, uh, you know, bums are urinating in front of my house. It's really important <laughs> to me that at least I have wireless networking. I have to be able to surf in the bed. And so um, uh, uh, I, I, well, I got an airport. I had the airport base station already. So you went with the Apple side of things. Yeah, I'm on the Apple side okay. of things. Which, uh, which was part of the problem, of course, because I had to have a 
titanium power book. And right. people who know about them, titanium power books are these fabulously sexy, incredibly thin laptops made of titanium and incredibly radio resistant metal. That, like, they receive no signal at all. Like you could hold them on top of access points and nothing happens. So I've got this uh, laptop that picks up no signal and I'm in the Faraday cage and all I have is like a, a really, a, a substandard regular airport base station which, you know, gives off like a little piddling amount of signal. <laughs> On top of this is the fact that my, my neighborhood is kind of the fashionable part of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, everyone in the neighborhood is, is a freelance writer. It's like, like hundreds of freelance writers. <laughs> so all they do all day is set up Wi-Fi networks in all of their houses. and they're Because on my street alone, if I go into the backyard, I would pick up 11 different Wi-Fi networks <laughs> all overlapping uh, our tiny little garden. So why don't you just do that? Why don't you just hang out in the garden and pick up Wi-Fi? You know, do a little war driving. Well... I did do that, and I did that quite a bit. But there are a couple of problems. One thing, it's, uh, it's New York. So except for right now in the spring and a few weeks during the fall, mm -hmm. the weather's actually horrific. So I'd be in the backyard, I'd be covered in snow, or I'd be baking hot in the sun, be like, I've got free wireless, but I'm baking. But it's not good. It's not good. So I need an indoor solution. Um, uh, and I talked to a lot of different people. My friend Glenn Fleischman, who, who does a lot of uh, a lot of uh, wireless work, I uh -huh. talked to a lot of people, and uh, they had really sensible things to say, like, uh, "Oh, set up multiple base stations, right. one at the front, one at the back, or an amplifier or something." Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but you know, what really got my attention, though, is as I was Googling for it, I kept finding these crazy sites with antennas where it was like uh, people kept talking about how they got more and more signal because there are people who are obsessed with using Pringles cans to send their signal like <laughs> 10 miles to the next town, you know? And so I, I just got really worked up. So I actually went to this place, uh, Hyperlink Tech. And uh, Hyperlink Tech has, has terrible customer service, <laughs> terrible returns policies. There is no return policy. You can't return anything. But uh, the one thing they do is that they send you whatever you want, even if it's military-grade soft uh, hardware. <laughs> like, if you look through the site on the surface, the first couple of links is all, like, regular amplifiers. But deeper in the site, there, there are amplifiers, and it's, they have little uh, things about them that say, like, you can only have this if you oh. work for the military. This is a little underground, a little military grade is yeah. what you're talking about. So what did you end up getting? What hardware did you use? Well, I, um, I, I, I tried ordering it just to see what mm -hmm. would happen, and they <laughs> give it to you. You, would, you have to check a box in the order form that says, yes, I'm a member of the military. <laughs> but then they sent it to you. So I ordered I ordered an amplifier. So what happens is I took apart my airport base station into it into its pieces. I threw away the sexy plastic covering, so it's just a little metal box. I tore out the antenna. I used the new and I, I plugged in an amplifier to the, to the to the base unit, and then I plugged a really <laughs> big antenna into the amplifier uh, because it's not enough just to put the antenna on because you lose signal if you don't have a, you get the amplifier going. The amplifier has its own power brick. The whole thing takes up a whole hutch right next to my where my computer. <laughs> It's huge. It takes up like I live in a New York apartment. It's a tiny place. One whole section is now this breathing, heaving monstrosity. But the signal strength. The signal strength. Is oh awesome. my God! The signal strength. I got the thing set up. I can't even measure it because it maxes out all the bars on every system that I would measure. It with. You know, uh, Max Stumbler just says like 100 percent, 100 percent, 100. Everything. Yeah, you have to go down the street to see where my signal. <laughs> And, um, Mike, this can't be legal. The FCC has got to send a van over to your house. You're going to go to jail over this. Well, uh, okay. I know the FCC does have rules. Rules. About <laughs> And I recognize, I recognize that I am broadcasting on the same frequency that uh, that microwaves broadcast on. And I'm aware that as I sit there, the radiating point is just to the left of my head. <laughs> and I think about this because right after I set it up, my eyeballs started to hurt. I kept imagining that they were microwaving. But... But the signal strength is so good. In fact, it's so good that it gets out of my Faraday cage of an apartment and it hits the other apartments. Now, that's the only real problem I'm having because all the other 11 networks, everyone on the block, mm -hmm. people are starting to complain to me because they know it's me because I, I, I gave it a name like Daisy Net. So people know <laughs> it's me. Big mistake because uh, other people started changing their session IDs so you can see what the networks are to things like... Hey, you with the network, and like, <laughs> guy with the really big network, and fat guy that uses all the, the big network, um, um, all, over, all up and down the spectrum. So, 
I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of afraid for my life in my immediate neighborhood, and I'm also concerned about the whole baking eyeball. Yeah, I was going to say, have you had any headaches or anything like that yet? Oh yeah. Any yeah. nausea at all? Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah. But I get that anyway, so it's kind of hard to tell. Like, because you know, as soon as you start thinking, you start reading about what microwave radiation does. You know, you start feeling the effects as soon as you read about it. So I can't actually tell if it's doing something to me <laughs> or if I'm just uh, full of it and it's totally fine. But I do know that even with my terrible receiving laptop, I can go anywhere in the house, mm -hmm. anywhere. I can stand inside the fridge and I still get a signal. <laughs> I get all four bars, and it's very important for me. Mike, thank, uh, thank you for showing our viewers what not to do with their Wi-Fi access points. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. One, one thing I have to tell you, I picked, up, I picked up your book, 21 Dog Years, Doing Time at Amazon.com, off of audible.com. Love oh, yeah. the book. Great book. Oh, thanks. I want thanks to tell so everyone much. out there to pick that up. It's so funny. It's about uh, your experiences at Amazon. Do you still consider them a, a cult, as you said in the book? <laughs> Yeah, more or less. I still have I, 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 a lot of the, the the crazier people have left, of course, driven out by uh, the the end of the bubble, making everything more normal. Right. But um, the people I know who are still on the inside are still say things have not changed all that much. So and the same kind of uh, crazy. I mean, Jeff is finally fessed up that he's building that space program. He runs a space company out of the same building that Amazon's in right now called Blue Horizon. I haven't where, even uh, heard about that. Uh, yeah, he's spending, it's actually public now. He, I, I mentioned in the book, like it's a joke, it's all true. He's <laughs> running, it's called Blue Horizon, and their goal is to get people into orbit. I mean, God bless him, I'd love to go into orbit, uh, <laughs> where I would probably, from orbit, would be able to pick up my Wi-Fi signal down on Earth. But, um... Uh, 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 but yeah, things are still a little <laughs> crazy. A little crazy. It's nice. It's nice. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for showing us your uh, Wi-Fi unit and your troubles. And it looks like uh, I'm jealous. I wish I had that kind of access. Well, you can come by my house or even my whole neighborhood and pick it up for yourself. <laughs> I've left it unencrypted. Just do whatever you want. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. To Thank learn more you. about Mike Daisy and catch his latest performance, check out his website. Ooh, the cops coming right now. And his blog at mikedaisy.com. Now, still ahead, our land party is raging. We'll check in to see who's still alive. And up next is living on the third, por bo third floor apartment. Protect our next caller's Wi-Fi. We'll tell them when the screensavers continue. <laughs> Jim joins us on the Tech TV Net Cam Network from Providence, Rhode Island. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Patrick and Kevin, how are you doing? Good. Good, how's it going? Not too bad. How can we help you today? Well, I've got a Wi-Fi network set up in my house between mm -hmm. my wife's and my computer. And I'm just wondering, is how I have 802.11b, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering how far exactly that transmits. <laughs> well, you're it, laughing, Patrick. Well, it depends. Like we just heard Mike Daisy talking about, like you know, 802.11b going six or seven miles on a cheap antenna in Seattle, where the walls are thin, and then in Brooklyn, not being able to get it through the next room into the bathroom. It doesn't, you know, he's joking, but it's not that far from it. Depending on the what kind of antenna you have in the card, uh, it can make a huge difference. How how far are you worried? To, how far away are you thinking people might be snooping well, in your network? I'm just wondering, because I had air snare running the other day, and I was continually getting, you know, internet access detected messages, and I'm thinking of just detecting the network. Yeah. Actually. But I was just wondering if, if 30 feet off the ground, is that, no. you know, a safe limit? I have the 256-bit web encryption. We actually, activated. the web encryption will help, right? Because what you want to do is make sure you're not real low-hanging fruit, because, like, you know, we're sitting in here, and, and we're kind of like a Faraday cage in this building because all the cables. Right. And we're picking up, okay, call for help. That's obviously one of our own uh, wireless access points in there. I don't think you can quite see that. The little tiny green spot up there, that's one of ours in-house. But this two-wire 12 is outside of the building, and this one up here is outside of the building. Um, you know, it's, it's not a horizontal medium. It, if you have an omnidirectional antenna, we're talking 100 feet up, 100 yards up. I've picked up signals. You know, on relatively inexpensive, you know, this is about as cheap as a, as a Wi-Fi card can get. It's 100 milliwatt. It's not real strong. It doesn't have an right. external antenna. And we've picked up stuff, you know, probably almost a quarter mile away without a problem. And all, I was going to say, you had that big antenna that you showed the yeah. other day. How could you, oh, here it is right here. 
Oh, I've actually just got the little six-inch antenna yeah. that the card comes with. I mean, here's the thing. The thing about the part of the reason that you know part of the issue here is right. Even without a directional antenna, you can start picking up stuff miles away with right. something like this. A mile is easy. Um, what's going to happen? It's like it's not even so much war driving. You should be worried about is war sitting, right? You know, you've got WEP turned on, which basically means you know somebody's probably going to ignore your network and go for any of the other right. 35 in the surrounding quarter mile. Um, are you worried about people tapping on your access, or do you think people are trying to break into your network? Well, I don't think anybody's trying to break in, but you never know who's going to be actually doing any war driving. Right. And say, oh, hey, there's a network. Let me see if I can break into it and download a bunch of music. And Right, yeah. Um, well, if you got web turned on and you change your key every few weeks, you should be fine. Yeah. That's, that's about the best you can do, Jim. You can see if you can upgrade the security on that, if there's been any updates from the site. Well, I downloaded the firmware update for the WPA. Uh-huh. But my um, wireless card doesn't have right. WPA yeah, that's the update, problem. So. That's the yeah. Uh, that's it's immensely frustrating. You know, in theory, anything that can run web should be able to run WPA. But a lot of companies aren't bothering to write the upgrades for older products. Uh, you know, I think if you've got the web turned on, you know, especially if there's other people in your neighborhood that have unsecure wireless access. That's the best thing. Is like basically, it's like if your neighbor doesn't have their security turned on. People are going to gun for their system, not right. yours. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it, Jim. Yeah, people can tap in. Yeah, people can tap in probably for the surrounding block or two, um, especially if they have a directional antenna. Yeah. But you're probably pretty safe, Jim. <coughs> Good luck. And you know what? He gets a free Tech TV t-shirt. Yes, he does for being a netcam caller. Now, don't go anywhere. We're going to show you a few common spam emails that try to sell you software that you can get absolutely free. And after the break, we'll check in with our LAN party and see who's kicking butt when the screen savers continues. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Patrick Norton. Coming up in this half hour, if you get a lot of spam trying to sell you software, don't buy into it. We've got some free alternatives. And Brandon's Wi-Fi shenanigans got him expelled from school. Now he's wanting to packet sniff with airports, <laughs> airport ex Apple's airport extreme. He got yes. expelled. That's so sad. In the meantime, let's check in with our LAN party. Joshua's over there. Yes. As we mentioned earlier, we're playing Far Cry Team Deathmatch. So if you are out there and killing these lab rats, good luck because they're tough to beat. Uh, this is the think tank here at Tech TV. These guys check out all of our products. And seat number one, the senior technical analyst, Robert Big Daddy Rat Heroin. Hey. So we, E3 is coming up in a couple weeks, and yeah. almost all of you guys go. What are you looking for? Well, I've already seen most of the new video cards that'll be shown there. One, not publicly yet. New hardware new desktop systems from all the major vendors are going to be there but it's usually the the one or two hidden software titles that you've just you've never heard of the game and mm -hmm. it just blows you away. So you have no clue about the software title. Either. Yeah. Well, like last year there was a game called Trinity that I really liked from Great Matter Studios. I don't know if I've heard of Trinity even. There was a it's the group who did uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein okay, and cool. those guys. Right. And that, that game just blew me away. It was set in the future, some really neat effects, but of course that game got canceled. Hopefully they'll be rolled into something else, but just the surprises for software. Cool. Well, get back in the game. We'll okay. see if uh, see if anybody's beating you oh, or yeah. not. Okay. Han, you're going to E3 also. Are you beating Robert? No, I'm getting smoked. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair enough. What are you looking okay, for fair. when you go to E3? Well, since I cover mobile and things like that, um, generally with you know cell phone games, mm -hmm. you know it hasn't been very exciting up to this point. Everyone keeps saying it's going to get better. <laughs> I'm not excited yeah, about well, it necessarily. Well, ATI has uh, video, the graphics uh, cards. Well, not cards, but chips for chips. it now. Same with Nvidia. Uh, Neo Magic's playing in that space too. Intel's playing in that space. The whole 3D right. gaming on your, on your cell, cell phone. phone. <laughs> Haven't seen a good game yet, so I'm hoping they'll at least have a good demo. I cool. think we're still a couple years away from seeing something really good. But cool. We'll get okay. back in the game and be a target for somebody. Yeah, I'd be a very good target so far. Apparently Lawson, because Lawson is, is, is the number one lab rat out of everybody here, but you play this yeah. game all the time. For work, because you yeah. have to oh, benchmark my work. system. Uh -huh. right. I sacrifice, you know. Right. So what is, th this system, this game can kill a system, right? Graphically. Yes. Um, this is probably visually one of the most beautiful games we've ever seen. So with that said, it's going to kill almost any system that doesn't, going to operate the highest, highest. Even if you have the, the ATI 9800 and the fastest processor, will it still kill that system? I've heard, I haven't tried this, I heard that you run yes. this test over, <laughs> overnight, it'll kill it. Oh really? It would kill it, it'll just crash it. 
Well, hopefully nobody has that problem. Well, I hope everybody has that problem because that means you have a nice computer. Uh, down on the end is Frank, you dirty rat Chan. He says very little, uh, so we're going to let him get back in the game. Right. See if you can beat him. <laughs> back to you guys. Thank you, Joshua. Folks, there we are. We've got kicked out of school. Brandon on the line. I'm wondering if you can use Apple's Airport Extreme to sniff packets. Brandon. And up next, don't buy software advertised by spammers until you watch this next segment. Chances are you can get it for free. Coming up with the screensavers continue. <laughs> it's time to check in with the perky campers over at Tech Live to see what's coming up tonight. What's up, boys? This is a hypothetical. It's not directed at you. It's directed at, uh, well, everybody, okay? okay? Having trouble finding a decent date on the matchmaking sites? Mm hmm? Well, you're not the only one. Tonight on Tech Live, <laughs> we're going to go behind the scenes of a new dating site called Theradate, using psychological tests designed by Shrink to match you up with people who think, you know, the world pretty much revolves around themselves, if you think that. Theradate. Yeah, Theradate. Have, have you tried it? No, oddly enough, I'm too busy working to have time for dates. Faraday. Oh. <laughs> have you Trying tried to make this, this product the best that I, I possibly can. <laughs> you know better. What? You no. want to talk to me about dating? Let's no. talk about dating. <laughs> Guys, birds be simple. Very simple. But no, it's not that simple. Okay, well, <laughs> the basic uh, idea is we'll talk more about it after the screensavers on Tech Live. Thanks. Chris Leary will be searching for his next date in the self-help section of his local Barnes & Noble. And Sarah Date coming up on the Tech Live right after this show. You scare us, Chris. It was but, just frightening. <laughs> but now. Oh, boy. Do you get spam? I do, indeed. I get spam. Little Everyone bit. gets spam. Even if you get spam filters, you get spam. But something we don't understand is why a lot of it's trying to sell software. Especially because a lot of it's trying to sell software that you need to get for free, download for free. And my mm -hmm. personal favorite, the ones that tell you how to use free software to do things like backup DVDs. Right. You know, it's like $30 is a secret to DVD backups. Don't get fleeced on software. And it's like a PDF file based on a website right. that somebody else did. Here's the thing. There's a lot of things you should do. Buying from spam is obviously one of them we advise you against. If you buy stuff from spam, guess what? They send out more spam because they're making money. Two, don't buy free software and don't even buy software. If, if they advertise the software in spam, that should be a reason to just never buy that brand of software. Mm -hmm. First up, antivirus software. It's inexplicable why anybody would sell antivirus software through spam, but it happens constantly, like at least once a day. Look, we tell you about this all the time. ABG. This is your favorite. Grease off. It's one of the only free antivirus software out there. It's pretty well updated. It's pretty. You know, it's a basic antivirus system. It's free, and you can run it. And, hey, just like everything else, you run the test, you get going, you can have it so it analyzes everything. You can do constant updates. You can analyze the traffic coming onto your system. And watching it on television is a lot like watching grass fornicates. So we're just going to stop that right now. <laughs> now, I have to tell you, I, I don't run AVGA. I'm not a big fan. Of free right. antivirus, is it really that good? I mean, I want to trust someone like a Norton or a you know, McAfee. And, you know, think of all the work you did testing all of those expensive firewalls. Right. And what did you find out the best one was? Well, I like the McAfee one, the paid one, but That's there true. was some nice free ones. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know what? I think they're doing a pretty good job. Some of the best softwares for the software firewalls, excuse me, some of the best antivirus software I ever saw, especially on the Macintosh, mm -hmm. all free stuff. Seems to work. I don't need to run an antivirus that often. There's only right. one or two systems I do run it on. AVG's held up quite nicely for me. Well, you're smart enough not to click on the attachments. That's a big deal. Well, you know, and the, well, the flip side of it is like the you know, problem with every, you know, every antivirus. If you're one of the people who gets the virus before they've discovered it and written an update for mm -hmm. it, or if you haven't updated it, it's not going to save you anyway. Very so, true. Good luck. Second application, one of my favorites, like you said, we see this all the time. Back up your DVDs, $99. Right. The instructions are $30. This time, great program, DVD Shrink. It's completely open source, completely free. One application, you thought uh, DVD X copy was easy. This right. is really easy. All you have to do is, the first thing is analyze the disk. And you can see here, it's going through the DVD and decrypting it, looking for the de decryption key and analyzing the entire content of the disk. It'll take about another 10 seconds here. And once it's finished, mm -hmm. it's going to show us how it, it's going to compress it and fit it down to one DVD. Because you know that DVDs that right. you buy are dual layer, whereas DVDs that you burn are single layer. Which basically means 9 gigabytes of data has to be squished down to fit on 4.7 gigabytes. Exactly. So let's take a look at it right here. Uh, once it's done analyzing the disk, here's the top here. This little green bar shows us uh, how much data can fit on the disk and exactly what we can take out. So if we want to take out the uh, AC3 uh, French track, the audio track, which is 152 megabytes, we can just take that out. 
in the director's commentary, we can take that out. Uh, the Spanish uh, subtitles, we can take those out. And so that'll save us some space and give us just that much better um, a compression. A little bit more room to expand. A little more, more room to expand, better quality pictures. And all you have to do is click on back up. And the second you do that, well, it's going to ask you to specify the, the region that you want first. When we say USA. It's going to burn it right to a DVD. And you'll have a perfect backup cool. without any warnings or anything like that. So like you don't a DVD need to use copy. Nero. You don't need a second yeah. burning application. It's ready to go. I think that uh, it'll use the Nero engine if you have it installed. Mm -hmm. It's like the back end. But it doesn't launch any separate application for you to run. So there's cool. no extra steps. It's we one like click that. and it's done. We and like it works great. Yeah. And Completely free. free. Yeah, I think the only reason to buy 321 Studios is to help them fight the battle against That's the, the only reason. But that is a big reason. That's a big reason. If Folks, you have the extra cash, that's a good help thing. them out. We got links in. Don't buy from spam. We got links and instructions about these free software applications and lots, lots more up at thescreensavers.com. Go Excellent. check them out. Now, coming up after the break, our next caller was kicked out of school and now is itching to use Airport Stream to packet sniff. Hmm, that's all right after these messages. Show. See where you can find rare comic books online and what they are worth. Plus, the Dark Dipper has not one, not two, but three quick tips for you. And director Kevin Smith talks about his obsession with Max comic book movies and the fact that he's owned every iPod ever made, <laughs> or at least one edition of each. All coming up on tomorrow's show. Now, Brandon joins us on the phone from Shingletown, California. Hey, Brandon. Hey. How's it going, man? A uh, little, a little mad. Expelled from school. Ouch. What? Yeah. What happened? Uh, I basically uh, was using my Orinoco card, and I launched his Mac, and I closed my uh, iBook, and then I'd walk around for class, class, we got packets for a week straight. Uh-huh. Mm. You and, cracked uh, the web encryption. Yeah. You were just capturing everyone's information, their emails, instant messages, conversations, all that good stuff? Yeah, and capturing packets was the way, too. Oh, uh, yeah. And then about after a week, I had the key, and then I logged in and stuff after school. Um, they uh, they have two separate networks, one for the students, one for the teachers, and they got me because they saw my IP address on both of them. <laughs> ah. I was going to say, how'd they nail you, Brandon? Yeah. How did they know it was you? Did they know by your MAC address? Um, yeah, that's how they got me. you got to throw that card away right after you do that. <laughs> just, just let you know. Yeah. Actually, better yet to use a card you can spoof the MAC address on. Yeah, that yeah. too. Either one yeah. of those. So you're basically learning the first lesson of being a hacker, which is that there is uh, accountability and responsibility through your actions. In this oh, case, yeah. are, are, you, are they going to let you back in, or are you hosed? Um, I find out next week if I am able to go back to school where I go to a reform school where they send all the bad delinquent kids. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. Whoa. Well, at least you can sniff at the reform school. The network administrators aren't quite up to par there. Yeah. Those. <laughs> yeah. Brandon, the kids that have been hijacking cards, and the ones of the fighters. I'm sure they'll, yeah. Oh, yeah, that will fit in just great. Hey, smile a lot and tell them you can get them free software from spam. <laughs> <laughs> so so what do you have to do? Is there, I mean, do you have to, can you plead your way back in? Is there any way you can get back into school? Is it, um, not what? really. Uh, no. I have to face a panel next week, ah. and they just basically look at my whole record, which uh -huh. is pretty kind of messed up. Yeah. And then the chances of me getting back into school are very slim. Well, how can we help you? There's got to be something we can do. Okay. No? Any any suggestions at all? <laughs> We've lost Brandon. I, I, yeah, I mean, because like, I think between the two of us, you know, we have a pretty sketchy history at Kimberly. Right. We I was turned say, out okay. This is like number 37 that I've gotten expelled from school, as yeah. far as kids go, they've been watching. I didn't get that one, but I have any of a number of lectures I'd really not to dwell on. So, is Brandon, how can we help you today? Is there, can we write um, a note for you? Can we help you crack another network? I mean, Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, well, you weren't supposed to answer that that way. Okay. That was a rhetorical kind I mean, of thing. I mean, no. Um, my mom took away my Aronoco card, and I have an Airport Extreme card, and my friend told me if I did something to the code and I ran Yellow Dog, I can catch packets with it. Oh. Ah, so you want to go back and do it again? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. To my own network, my mom You might want to wait till after. after the hearing to do this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's not a good idea. I mean, once you've been caught, you got to oh, wait to... It's my own network. Oh, it's oh. your own network. Okay. Yeah, my mom changed the password to kind of ground me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you want to get uh, back in... I can't in... go two months without internet, so... I hear you on that, though. Um, <laughs> there are a couple options. You may not have to... Um, run Yellow Dog Linux on it. There, I, I, I know there's something that will actually run using the Airport Extreme that will do it. The, 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 the issue is, to sniff the networks, yeah, the, the, the issue, though, is, is to collect the packets and, and do the web cracking. He's been using uh, Kismac, though, which 
is great for doing that, but right. you have to use the Orinoco card. The Airport Extreme uh, does not allow you to go into passive mode. Okay. It'll take a look at all the networks out there, but it won't actually capture the packets. I'm sure you've seen that. You can see your network just fine, right, Brandon? Yeah, I you, see it. I you just, just can't. can't. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, you, there's not, I don't know, I, I, this is the first I've heard of Yellow Dog allowing you to do that. But, should, I mean, in theory, I mean, the, the question is whether or not somebody's written the Yellow Dog Linux extreme drivers. Um, I mean, this, you're going to spend some time researching this. Obviously, you probably have a lot of spare time, what with not going oh, to school yeah. right now. Um, <laughs> Take that time and write yourself a nice letter, and when you go to the board, give them the letter, say you're sorry, and get back into school. Trust us on that one. Yeah, I mean, the oh, biggest. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going to touch that one at this point. The biggest issue with the with the Airport Extreme is finding out if there's drivers for Yellow Dog Linux. Uh, you know, I got to say, Brandon, I, I know problems, you're tortured, though. but but you might want to hold off on this little exercise in Linux until after you've gotten through that uh, hearing next week. Go outside and play for a while. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Brandon. And like I said, write a letter. Get yourself back in. School is very important. Or borrow an Orkonoko card. No, somebody. no, Patrick. You're not, you're not the dark tipper. Be good, Patrick. Let's check in with Dan for another little bit of useful information. Thank you, fellas. All you gadget gurus are going to love our Digital Digs Roadshow. But as a bonus, you also get to meet Chris Leary, Fresh Gears Chris Leary, and Stephanie C. Miller in person. Not bad, huh? Now, the Roadshow uh, hits the Hoolan Mall in Fort Worth, Texas. On May 8th and 9th, the event, the event runs from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday and noon to 5 on Sunday. Now, for more information and to learn more about the Coast to Coast Stops the Roadshow, go to techtv.com slash digital digs. But now, stay where you are because we're going to read your final email to see what's on your mind when the screensavers comes back. No. Scores from each of our each round of our land party today, powered by Nvidia. No one from the lab. I'm shocked. Hmm. What do you think, Pat? We need to get in there and play. Uh, yeah, I'll help out. Have you played lot. Far Cry at all yet? I have played Far Cry. It's amazing. It's great. Graphics. However, unlike Brentano, I haven't been playing it with every waking moment of my life <laughs> outside well, of work. That one between Star Wars Galaxies and Far Cry. So last week I played Far Cry for 16 hours straight on Saturday, and this Saturday will be Star Wars Galaxies. <laughs> you know, and it's amazing. He has a, a lovely, lovely, you know, young lady date yes, and a fairly balanced life, despite the 30 plus hours a week of gaming. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, it sucks to be me. You know. <laughs> Congratulations to the high scores. We want to thank the rats for coming by and taking names if you didn't the land get a, party. If you didn't get a chance to play this week, go right now to our website and register because you can play next Thursday for our next land party, which is going to be Far Cry? Next Thursday, we don't have a live show. Oh, we don't. That's yeah. right. We're going to be in D.C. Yeah. After that, it'll be Unreal Tournament 2004, though. Ooh, the week we come be back. Cool. So. Very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for some emails. Let's do it. Let's do it. We gotta let's bang a couple out. Okay, this guy, Derek, wants to know. I am looking to buy a wireless router. Uh, what's what are the best routers that are compatible with Mac, Linux, and Windows, and also have the best security? Hmm. You know, it's, it's funny. People don't realize if if it runs IP like the internet, there it can connect to any computer. So don't worry about Mac, Linux, mm -hmm. OS 10, you know, 7.5. If it can connect to the internet, if it can connect to Ethernet or to a Wi-Fi card, it can connect to the router. That said, you're a big fan of the the Linksys routers. Uh, I like the Linksys because you can upgrade them with the Linux. But mm -hmm. I also like the Netgears. They're really cool. They have a, a functionality where if someone port scans you, mm -hmm. it'll send you an email notification. Mm -hmm. Some really cool features that they're yeah. adding in. Uh, Netgear has some really cool stuff. Yeah. SM MC does stateful packet inspection if you're looking for a That's more sweet. severe firewall. Any of those options will take care of you. It's good cool. stuff. Good stuff. Is that it? That is it for this edition of the Screen Savers. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Patrick Norton. We want to thank you for joining us. We'd like to thank our guest, Mike Daisy. Love Mike Daisy. We want to thank the Tech TV Lab Rats. And we want to thank Joshua Brentano for providing a gaming example for us all. We're going to go, folks. Have a great night. Have a good night. Bye.